instructions are pretty explicit, yeah. but before you turn anything on, I would like for you to ask me to come over and inspect your setup to make sure that you've done it uh, as instructed so that we don't burn up the only amplifiers we have and potentially damage equipment. So we want to be very careful about that. Okay, uh, the time domain reflectometer, which we just briefly went over with uh, in the lecture, uh, is a closed loop time domain uh, radar system. It's probably the most expensive piece of equipment in the room. It was nice that Keysight allowed us to have two of them. And we've, they've given us two of them every year since we've been doing school. Uh, I'm not sure, certainly, uh, I, I do not believe North uh, NI makes them, and I don't believe Roland Schwartz makes them either. Uh, they're very delicate, very specific use. But this thing here is really impressive. Uh, I'm incredibly impressive. Number one, they've done a lot of improvements. This is the actual TDR module. And it has four channels, not one, not two, as they had in the past, which makes this a four-port time domain uh, analyzer. And this thing is so much more powerful than we're initially doing here. I get for the power for the power guys in the room, after you've done all the experiments, there's a lot of interesting things that you can do uh, with characterizing things as though this is a four-port network analyzer, except in the frequency domain, it's in the time domain. I mean, this module is probably worth thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. And the thing that they did nice about it is now the spigots are at, at the end. So the, the business, the money under these little square boxes at the end. The pulser and the sampling and everything else is physically in that little box. And all the signals that get back into the box are then down converted so that the meticulous monkeying around and computing goes on inside the mainframe. Now the mainframe is something that this is just having a plug in. You can plug in very fast scope probes, probably a spectrum analyzer into this. You can do all kinds of uh, uh, things in the scope. And what did you say that scope frames cost? So the scope, the scope mainframe alone is 20000 and in that input, we haven't, we haven't seen what the quote is, but I'm sure it's in the 40, because this thing's got 10 picosecond rise time. It's a 50 gigasample uh, bandwidth beast. And we don't have anything close to that in any of the spectrum or uh, network analyzers. So it's, uh, it's pretty darn sensitive. Now, each of them has got a wristband that looks like a Timex watch band on it. This one has the official cord. On that one, they didn't give us a nice springy cord, so I just jerried one up with one of the wires I made. Who's ever touching the buttons or the cables, and you guys should all share, has got to wear this on the wrist at all times. Fortunately, we're not been sparking in this room. Uh, I think if, if we were sparking in this room, we would have to take this experiment out on the curb because static electricity will totally kill the thing. We are not going to use it in the fundamental mode I mean, in the super fancy mode, all four channels uh, initially. We're just going to use it as a simple one channel uh, time domain reflectometer. Uh, I did learn how to use the auto calc kit, but that again is for the advanced. You've got nothing better to do by the end of next week, and I can show you how to play with that. It's rather handy. It does have a manual calibration mode, which I'll walk you through right now, but it has some features I really don't care for, uh, but that's up to you to decide what's going on. So when you first turn the thing on, and you, you need the mouse here to, to monkey around with it, and it's got all, a lot of other creature features in terms of save, this, that, and the other. You guys can figure that out on your own. When you first turn it on, though, it thinks it's an oscilloscope, okay? And that's perfectly fine, and we don't want it in oscilloscope mode, so you can interrupt under this, and we want TDR, TDP. And it does a lot of click, 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 click. And the first thing it asks you is, oh, we have a four-port analyzer. Now, this thing won't let you do anything unless it's been calibrated up front. And I've calibrated this one and that one, but what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to do this initial calibration because there's a bunch of steps in there, which again, when you're really done, 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 and you want to know how this happens, you actually have to calibrate that slot first before it'll listen to what this thing is doing. And I've already done it, but now when I'm going to move these things and unplug it, I'm going to have to do it again. It doesn't take that long now that I know what to do. But I don't really want to, uh, I don't want to make that so cumbersome for you. So we're not going to do the super advanced thing. So this, look how cute this is, is uh, I just want that. You just pick this one up and say, I don't want that. It's supposed to go away, by the way. Oh, yeah? Is that so? What's wrong here? It worked before. 
very close. You just drag it and toss it. So now all of a sudden it knows it's just a single channel TDR, which is good because if you had to do a full four port calibration on this, uh, and they only give you a two port auto guy, so it's not like the four port auto guys we have on the network analyzer, there's lots of steps and you're just changing lots of cables and connectors. Okay, so that's all really good. And at this point here, I want to make a new calibration, so it's got this little business down here to do that. And it takes you, they call it the wizard. Uh, you know, it says you've only got one guy, which is good. And then we want to know what are we, what kind of a calibration we can use. Well, here's what we got. Option is ECAL, short load through, or short open load through. Well, we're not going to do any transmission uh, situations, and open circuits are a little hokey. So we're going to just take the short load through technique. ECAL can come later when everyone has figured out, become experts at this. <clears throat> because it's sampling lots of pulses, things could be kind of noisy, in which case this thing automatically averages some things. 128 is kind of long, and we're going to have you doing some things like running your fingers along transmission lines, and you don't want the averaging to be sitting there lagging behind. So for this, I think we'll just set this down, and 16 is the limit. So it'll always average 16, but it triggers pretty darn quick. Okay, and now you have to select the response you want, and the only one is this one right here. You want to make sure it's green, because if it doesn't turn green, but you can see there's 16 potential parameters that you could measure. So we'll just select that guy right there. Okay, and right now it's going to say start the wizard. And here it tells you what you want to do. It says you want to put a short circuit, press measure, and then you want to do an open circuit. The interesting thing is now when it comes to this piece right here, the connectors that are on this are nothing we have here. They're precision APC 2.4 or 2.9 millimeter. And the box in here gives us special adapters to go to SMA. So that has to happen, okay? So we put this SMA to this very special adapter on there, but do I want to be playing with the end of that connector? This is the only one there is, and we're gonna be mucking around with it for a whole week. No, we don't. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna screw on an SMA to SMA adapter on here so that once I put this on, it stays on. And if we ruin this end, of course, it's a several dollar connector that I brought and not maybe a $500 connector that came with the unit. Okay, but there's no way else without that adapter that I could measure anything on this. And that's because it has a 10 picosecond rise time, which is a 50 gigahertz equivalent bandwidth, and SMA is only good to 26 gigahertz only. <laughs> But it is only that. As you want to go to much higher frequencies, the diameter has to get smaller so, don't, so you do not get waveguide modes on the coax. Okay, so now when we're at this point here, we're ready to put our calibration standards on there. And you can use any one of the SMA cal kits, and it's just putting your open and short on there. And you have to do it in the sequence they, they're asking you to do it. Um, let me, just for giggles, I, I want to use a cal kit. I don't have a cal kit with me right here. Who has one of the SMA cal kits? I just need a short and an open uh, mail. So you don't have to tell them which kit you're using? What's that? You don't have to tell them which kit you're using? We're going to get there. Uh, I, I, maybe I went through that kind of quick. Uh, it does ask, when there was that thing of eCal out there, I'm just going to be using generic Cal kit. Okay. So that I don't have to worry about any of the other gory details. <coughs> so, okay. Uh, that is... Uh, down. Okay, this is a load. I need the short circuit then. That's an open. Here's the short. Okay, so first of all, if I if I say cancel this, I want you to see what the raw thing is doing. What this thing is doing is it's putting out a step response. The step response is coming out of the little rectangular electronic box, and now it's going through the adapter and the elbow. And therefore, you can see that there's a certain amount of time here. Now the time per distance is on the bottom here. It tells you how many picoseconds uh, per division it is. And uh, I'm having a tough time seeing it. I'm having such a tough time seeing it, I trust the marker button over here. Okay, it's listening. Oh, it's not, oh, I'm in the middle of Cal sequence. It won't let me do squat. All right, so I just have to say, done, the hell up. All right, and I'll start all over again at some point. So the thing is, uh, the amount of, it, it says right there, it says 800 points. And it's 200 picoseconds per division. And you can see, 200, that still looks like it's a straight vertical line. 
So the pulse starts at some zero volts, jumps up, okay? It's a 50 ohm system to this point here, and then, now will it take the markers? Yes, and you can put markers on any of four channels. So we'll just start by putting it right here, and uh, we'll say, uh, okay, what we'll say? Close. And all of a sudden, here are the markers, which can, I think, move either with the knob or with this. And right here, you see it looks like mine is 144 picoseconds, because I'm not calibrated yet. I don't know if you can see that, it's a pretty small print. But, uh, and then, of course, when the open circuit happens, it's at plus 280. You know, so zero is someplace in here. But that's the whole point of calibrating, is to find out exactly where we want to be. Now, this is what a normal TDR would always show you. It'll show you the step, it sends it out, and it's waiting for the echo. And in this case, the echo is a positive one reflection coefficient. So you see that. All right, so now we're going to, let's get back to the calm over here then. And that's what I would normally like to see, uh, but they do a little bit of a hokey thing here. All right, so again, we just have that guy right there. Here, I'm just going to say I want short load through, uh, three and a half millimeter, because that's what the SMA is. And then uh, I'm going to just select generic three and a half millimeter. Okay, and at that point there, I've already set the thing down to 16 averages. Uh, the response is I got my T11, which is what I want. Close that. And then I'm going to start the calibration again. And the first thing it wants is the short circuit, which I have in my hand. And you want to verify it, because it's going to believe that you're doing what it's telling you to do. All of a sudden, you see what happens to the display underneath there. It shows the short, short circuit out at that point. And then you say measure. And it's happy. And then you take the short circuit off. And you put the load on. Here's the load. And then you can see it's it. See a little blip in there? That's because I don't have the connector tighten yet. You'll see when you're doing even end connectors how we're telling you on how, if you haven't already seen the resonance between one, one and two gigahertz on a loose type end connector, uh, you know, it'll certainly pop up here that you don't have, right? And no matter, I've got a, I could sit there, I got a torque wrench. I could sit there and I will torque this down, and I will torque this one down. Still, the blip is there. How bad is that blip? We're going to find out in just a second. But first, we're going to first we're going to finish the calibration. So, say measure, measuring, and now it says it's done. And if you read the fine print here, it's going to store the calibration someplace, and you'll be able to divine where you're storing this calibration. The thing that's kind of nice, though. As you notice, I'm doing all of this. This is all IF low information information. I've got this, I can actually bring my test head to the part. The reason why this is so good, in the past they would have to have the connectors on the front panel. You'd have to get your fingers in there to try to torque it around, and you could do a lot of damage to the front panel because you had to have a cable on there to go someplace. This is a great idea. They put a one meter cable on it, and this allows you to get where you need to go. It stays put, and as you noticed on your network analyzer or anything, if you did a little of this with the cable, bad things happen. That doesn't happen here. So this is a very good idea. All right, so we're done with that. Okay, and now all of a sudden this comes on. This is where it gets pretty good. Okay, there's this little button over here that says the displays. And it allows you to say, what do I want? Reflection coefficient? Do I want uh, impedance? Do I want volts? Let's have all of them. Let's see, I want one of those, and I have to say T11. And I want one of these in volts. And I want T11. Don't select it, it doesn't come up. And say good. And then I want percent too, which gives me the reflection coefficient, T11. And I got that. And I can close that. Now I got these four windows up here to where I could take a look. This is, let's say, let's look at it in ohm land. And all of a sudden, this scale becomes ohms. And as you put different things on there, you can see what the impedance of, of lines are. And you'll see that there's various impedances on some of these strip lines. Or you might want to look in reflection coefficient land. And let's just do that. Let's put the short circuit back on. See that? Now it turned the averaging way up again, I think, because this is an open circuit. Yeah, sure. Where's, the, where's, where's my short circuit? Here's the short circuit. Okay. And remember we have markers here, which is the marker button. When that thing comes up, 
Uh, let's see, where do I want to put markers? I want to put markers on uh, the ohm scale, let's say. Put it on the ohm scale. And you can set a mix and match your markers. And once I'm on the ohm scale, now all of a sudden I can move my marker around. Notice that that short circuit's at zero seconds. It's calibrated for you. And it's zero ohms. So if you wanted to calculate your vis bar from the impedance, you could do that, but you got reflective coating. All those things we had is you can get it all for free and get it all at the same time, which is very handy. And then, of course, let's not forget some of the really elegant things that are essential. Uh, the display setup. Well, I don't know if I like red velvet. Let's go with mocha. <laughs> okay. There's all kinds of crap like that on here. So you can, you can if you're a colorist, you can get it exactly as you like it. <laughs> Oh, is there a big chocolate chip is there? Let's see. I was looking for pews earlier, but I couldn't find that. Let's see, you've got mocha, you've got midnight, pitch black. Oh, look at it, it keeps going. Oh, yeah. Red velvet, classic silver. And uh, that's all, it's all crap. Um, but it's here, no extra charge. The thing is, they paid some software knuckle that to do this. Okay, it doesn't really enhance things. Maybe if, if you're in marketing, it makes a difference. Okay, uh, what else is need to know? Well, like I said, on the, you can either, this will show you uh, the time mode, the amplitude mode. Here it's showing you picoseconds. You can't hurt anything by touching buttons, providing you have this on. You could hurt this thing a lot if you abuse it. So let's not. Uh, and yes, there are three more channels, which says we have eight channels of TDR available to us. I'd like to return all eight in working conditions so that if the next person who teaches this course goes to a key site, they'll actually loan them a piece of equipment. So, so that's the TDR. The, the lab, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. You know, if you get stuck on this, it's fine. Everyone should at some point wear the wristband and tinker. Uh, and the mystery loads are in there and all kinds of other fun stuff. Uh, and there's also um, the ability, look at this. Now, isn't this a clever icon? A camera. You don't have to search for the button. This is why I'm liking this already. You don't have to search for the button to do the screen dumps. Here's a screen image, and now you stick your memory stick in there, you, you get it all out. Okay. Now, you guys are accumulating an enormous amount of data, and I've been going around and asking you, um, you know, and I know we go drinking every night, that's great, but, uh, you know, I, I'm asking you, can you show me this? And so far, people are having a tough time showing me what they've been doing. So, you do need to take some time. There's no need to finish all the measurements, uh, you know, up on the first three or four days, and then try to go back and write your labs up on the last two or three days. You should be trying to make sense of your data as you're taking it. Because otherwise you may have to go back and repeat the experiment, especially when I come across and say, you know, like those guys over there said, no, everything's 11 nanoseconds long. I says, you really think this is 11 nanoseconds long? I don't think so, you know. So you really want to do a little analysis as you're moving along so that you believe what you're measuring uh, and uh, you don't, because you, sometimes you may not have the opportunity to go back, especially if you're working on a beam measurement, you know, you get a few hours of study time and you take your data, but you kind of want to understand your data as you're taking it because the opportunity to measure again uh, may not come for some long time. So make sure you're actually, when you're taking all these things there, put some comments and, and, uh, and labels, et cetera, so that you know what you're doing. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is I've dedicated that table will become a TDR table, and we're going to want to take one more table make a TDR table. We want two tables with cavities on it, and then all the other equipment for everything else can be moved around appropriately. Because to do the amplifier, you need a spectrum analyzer and a network analyzer. And uh, you know, for this thing, you just need this beast. So I want to find one more table where, we, where I can set this up and do its preliminary calibration, and then someone, of course, can start, two teams could start working on TDR as well at which point you now have the background to do every one of the experiments. And there's a, there's, there's a total of eight experiments uh, in the list, uh, and then there's lots more we can do for the eater beaters. Okay. This is a nice box. Oh, I think I fixed it.